Welcome to Yates Makes. So the day arrived, the mega gel plate came through the post and here's some really tense, exciting footage of me unboxing it. So this video is all about me putting it through its paces, getting my kind of initial impressions and what I've made or what I've tried to do is go for a really expressive outcome. So here is the first one we'll be going through. I've just finished this really cool book called Grief is the Thing with Feathers. It's got a crow in it. Um, so it's kind of inspired by that. A really expressive outcome and a more kind of graphic um, photo transfer kind of music poster from one of my musical heroes, Augustus Pablo. Okay, so loads to go through in this video. It's quite a long one. I'm covering huge amounts of technique and I'll give you a really honest assessment as, as to whether I think this kind of these large format gel plates are really worth the investment because let's be honest, they are quite an investment if you're not making your own one. All right, let's get into it. Okay, this more expressive piece um, is a real combo to, of, of, of techniques. I've got paper collar graph, I've got oil pastel resist going on, and then I've printed over areas with a masking tape kind of collar graph. So the starting point was a really quick graphite expressive drawing on 140 GSM smooth paper. Very quickly went into some areas with oil pastel, hoping that this would give me a little bit of resist on and transfer onto the plate then you know i really wanted some textures now this is the first kind of indication that i'm really going to enjoy this big um format gel plate because immediately i can work a lot more freely and expressively with this sort of technique ripping papers layering up and the extra bit of space is allowing me not to you know get all caught up in too much fiddly stuff so enjoying it so far um, just drawing in a bit of oil pastel detail here some kind of rafters in the background so the first transfer um, I inked up in a kind of mixture of, of green and black and you can see how just how big this plate is and it takes quite a lot of covering um, so I'm mixing the paint directly on the plate, kind of swirling it around, I'm trying to work quick because I know from experience if you let this paint hang around too long and dry too much, you know, your transfer just doesn't come off as clean. I wasn't aiming for a particularly clean kind of outcome here, so it didn't matter too much. So inked up and on with my weird collar graph oil pastel combo transfer sheet. Now I'm hoping that I can reuse this um, for future prints. So down it goes bit of pressure on the back and probably left it down for about 15 20 seconds all up this footage is very much in real time to give you an idea of how long the transfer is down for so i make that about 15 20 seconds you'll notice i use magazines uh, for the uh, collage areas and i was hoping i'd get some text as well come through um, which did work, but I think the varying heights and different pressures meant, you know, my transfer came through clear in some areas, not so clear in others. What I did get, which I was really chuffed with, was a faint kind of impression of um, the features of the bird's head, the legs, that I can work over the top of. And, you know, I'm, I'm going to leave most of that kind of detail and texture on the wing, that background kind of ripped textures. They're all going to remain... Um, pretty much as they are so now the plan was just to work into areas so next step was very much add a bit of color so I've been liking this kind of new Amsterdam color I bought which is kind of Naples yellow green I think it's called and I'm just blocking in a bit on the the body of the bird there splashing a bit around in the background and then I'm pulling this once those layers are completely dry I'm going to pull this with a wet layer of white so again working pretty quick i say it again the initial transfer plus that little bit of green color fill i've just done they're completely dry i'm now inking up a nice generous layer of white this layer of white is going to pull everything i hope off the plate so i'm making sure i've got a good even coverage I've got a nice big sheet of like 240 GSM, I think it is, 250 GSM paper, or 200, no, sorry, 200 GSM paper, 
um, that's going down now and I'm going to leave that a good sort of 20 minutes to make sure it's totally dry and you can see I've flipped it over here um, you know my uh, my gel plate is still kind of spanking new and clean so you can see right through it and um, this is me peeling up rather than peel the paper off the gel plate I'm finding it easier with this this big gel plate to peel it off of the surface and not kind of bend or buckle the paper as I go and there you go I was really chuffed with this as a starting point I mean actually you could leave it as is I think it's quite an interesting print just just like that but I really wanted to push it see where I could go next so next step was to look at some details and identified the head and down the kind of breast of the bird um, to try and get a bit more clarity a bit more detail so you know my thoughts pretty quickly those of you who know the channel know me my thoughts pretty quickly go to masking tape so I was thinking I could either do a lino cut over this little section or I could go with a masking tape print so I've traced off the area that I want to create some detail into and I am now remembering to flip it because of course you know everything you print with a relief print like lino masking tape whatever is going to is going to reverse and um, just building up some more detailed drawing first in graphite then in pen and this is what I'm going to use to build my masking tape collagraph over the top of if you've not seen me do this technique before I'll link a couple of videos above now you can go back look at my kind of back catalogue if you like and you know in detail videos where I add a lot more detail about this technique it's pretty simple really I've put a sheet of kind of thin acetate plastic over my drawing and then you know just build my uh, masking tape shapes over the top of that so moving on there you go there's my masking tape collagraph all finished and I've just cut those shapes to kind of roughly match my inked drawing that I, I've just done on the paper so um, I'm being careful to cut here um, leaving a kind of flap out of the back you know near where the neck of the bird is now I've cut it very clean around the outline of the bird the beak the head but this little flap I've left on the end that you'll see now is what I'm going to use to kind of hinge to the paper so if I flip it over you'll see what I mean now so there you go laid over the top that straight edge on the right hand side is what I'm going to tape to the to the print and this is going to help me with my inking up and keeping everything in rest uh, in register so there you go just taping it down now this is a little trick I've developed to help me when dealing with these kind of small little um, masking tape collagraphs working over the top mixed media so I'm using um, Caligo safe wash um, printing ink here um, mixing up a, a dark green I only need tiny amounts of ink probably needed a fraction of what I've actually rolled out here but um, first on a separate sheet of plastic just rolling out making sure I've got a nice even coverage on my roller then I can shift this out of the way and you can see how I set up and I think I cover this in previous videos I've, I've flapped my uh, masking tape collagraph back there and I've put a little piece of paper underneath obviously I want to protect my print that's just going to kind of stencil that off and make sure everything stays clean and then just inking up nice and carefully making sure I've got all of those little masking tape shapes covered and then I can simply remove that bit of paper flap my little collagraph over onto my print I'm just cleaning it up where I've done a a bit too much work there clean it up with a bit of tissue and then you can just flap it straight back over and um, well in this case um, I used a kind of a wooden spoon and a roller but um, you can just apply some pressure and you'll find you should find that as long as you're using a good quality printing ink it will sit quite nicely over the top of the acrylic but you will have to wait a while for it to dry so there's my piece of paper that I'm just laying over the back of um, the collagraph again I just want to keep everything protected so um, 
you know, putting some pressure down with my right hand there just to make sure things don't slide or shift too much. Obviously it's taped, so it should be okay, but this is just, you know, some of those thinner sections can move a little um, if you're a bit too rough. So just gentle pressure with the wooden spoon and it transferred just fine. So moving on, I kind of repeated this process for the kind of breast area of the bird. Again, another piece of plastic traced off that shape, flipped it over, built up another little masking tape collar graph and transferred that. Here I am again kind of hinging it to the print, making sure it's kind of lined up first so I don't have to worry about doing that with kind of ink all over it, getting ink on my fingers, making a mess, again flapping it back, popping that little piece of paper over to protect while I ink up. and. Um, this time I used far more ripped textures, far less knife work, because um, you know it's, it's on a sort of larger area where I didn't need too much detail. And um, again, yeah, inking up. I just wanted a little more kind of dense black, a bit more definition and a bit more contrast on this section. So flipping it back over, removing that piece, grabbing another clean piece of paper to then apply my pressure over. Again, focusing on keeping everything as clean as possible. Use the roller to apply some pressure this time. No real fear about it slipping around because it's a kind of a bigger, bolder shape. Peel that back, carefully peel the tape off, and yeah, it kind of worked. You know, it's given me that little bit of contrast and dense black uh, tone that I wanted just to add a bit of definition to that section and yeah really pleased um, with it so far you know these are techniques that I'm kind of developing on the spot now this um, was a real kind of game changer I guess for this piece I've frozen the video there on this fantastic little roller brayer that um, my partner bought me which is really thin and I've been wondering what to use it for for quite a while she bought it for my birthday um, a year or so ago and um, it's perfect for what I'm doing now which is taking some of that printing ink um, from my acetate which is kind of off off camera and drawing with it and getting some using the edge of it to get some really fine line work you can almost run it out of ink and um, get a softer more muted tone as well um, you know it's actually a really sensitive drawing tool and drawing straight in with the ink of course is is going to make it really match with the bit that I've just printed so you know this um, well what a discovery this is going to kind of liberate me working on this big scale in these expressive kind of mixed media ways absolutely fantastic so I'll say a big thank you now um, I waited a year to use it but wow have I found a use for it um, so there you go I'm going to leave it at that because you know you can kind of kill these things if you overwork them nice mix of textures and layers love it definitely coming back to this right the next piece to try and explore how this mega gel plate is going to work with a kind of different approach um, you know you all like working in different ways um, so this is a, a far more graphic outcome and involving a bit of photo transfer so all I've done is a drawing first I've got a canvas board prepared just with some layers of texture and they're just printed sanded printed sanded layer upon layer and I've now onto A3 paper I've done a laser print of my drawing so this is a, 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 a black and white drawing that I've done and I've then enlarged it onto A3 paper with it's a laser print it's black and white but I printed it with the color settings because I still think it makes a tiny bit of difference so let's talk about what I did first well I wanted a kind of background section to to print onto a kind of you know a frame if you like or a slab of color so um, I've just used a piece of old newspaper I've nicked from my neighbor and I'm cutting out a kind of frame and this stencil this rectangle is going to be my first section I'm going to transfer onto my canvas board and then build my print up in layers from here so just taping it down so it doesn't shift too much and um, then I can just pop my gel plate straight on top and hopefully print that section so mixing up directly onto the gel plate 
a nice kind of like pale creamy turquoise color and I've you know intentionally inked up over the top of my frame just so I get a sense of how big a space I need to roll out onto I don't want to waste any paint so there you go that should about cover it again you know mixing on the plate trying to work quite quick so I don't want it to dry too much popping that down and you know this is one layer it's going onto canvas board which is already kind of sealed with acrylic so I did leave it a few minutes to make sure it was dry and then peeling up and you can see you know, it's got a lot of texture in there but it's a nice even graphic shape for me to build my image on fantastic to have this massive gel plate that I can just do this in one hit and get an even coverage right so I'm now gonna start building shapes forward if you like so the first thing I've done is is trace off a shape against the edge of my drawing and I'm just snipping that out making another little stencil you'll see how this relates to my image in a second once I get all of this out of the way so there you go there's my image I've just taped it to try and position things and you can see on the left hand side of his face there I just wanted this little slab of background color um, so I initially did this in a kind of pink um, I subsequently as you see in a video I go back and change it but you know it's easy it's a great thing about these gel plates is you can just layer as much as you want so that is pink mixed with a bit of gel medium because I wanted to retain some transparency and make sure that that initial color came through um, right next shape um, while that's drying I've just very quickly marked out my next big stencil graphic shape to build up in my background and that's like a long rectangle that's going to overlap these initial two shapes this time though I'm going to try and get some pattern into it just going to pull this up and yep yeah, seems to have worked okay as I said I come back and change the color but um, there you go you can see how the two layers kind of interact and there's a bit of transparency there so the next shape I um, transferred was this kind of you can see I've got it all lined up ready uh, mixing up some orange and I'm gonna do a little dotty pattern it's kind of pop pattern transfer and if I zoom in now look you'll see that that's transferred just fine that layer I'm gonna pull with white and a little tiny bit of gel medium as well mixed in and that is going to sit over the top of my two shapes that I've already transferred so there you go popping it down and let that dry for a good 10 minutes and it's subtle but it is in there I'll try and zoom in a bit there you go and you can see that orange dotty pattern sitting over the top of my first two colors right the next thing is just a bit of scraping you know a bit of kind of this is where the face is going to be so I just wanted some lighter tones um, just to create a bit more contrast with the face when I transfer it right here's where I changed my mind I wanted blue instead of pink so mixing up a little bit of blue flipping that over still got the stencil from the first go and I just wanted a stronger color really on this side and yeah I was much much more pleased with it there you go so what's that one two three layers built up so far next I wanted a pattern over my blue so I've gone back in again with my dotty pattern, transferred that. Hope you're keeping up here. And I'm just using part of this to sit over the face and just overlap those shapes as well. Right, while that's drying, I am just going to mask off or stencil up some, some little circular shapes. I'm going to have some sort of graphic circles on the um, what is will be the right hand side. You're viewing it as a sort of um, lower part of the picture but I'm I've kind of working with everything twisted here um, just to fit it all on the camera now again these shapes I'm transferring with a mix of gel medium and color that's purely just because I, I want to try you know this is the first time I've really explored this I really want to see you know learn a bit more about ratios and and getting things trans you know varying degrees of, of transparency to make sure my my layers kind of peek through each other so that was a kind of very pale greeny color 
or a green oh no that was a pink one that's right um, that came out a bit too bold so I think you know next time I used a little bit more um, gel medium in the mix um, in hope that I got uh, you know slightly more transparent um, color transferred again positioning that same stencil the circle that I've cut out flipping that over and um, you know as you see this one came out quite strong as well but it's okay it's, it's still gonna work what I'm dealing with at the moment is it's just background shapes the, the kind of main course if you like hasn't even arrived yet we're you know this is all the kind of really fun prep work exploring layers and color and just having fun texture before you do your main photo transfer you know if you're into this sort of graphic outcome so because those shapes are quite bold um, in color and, and tone and they were fairly opaque I just let them dry and I sanded them back create a little bit of texture let some of those base colors peep through um, this is a real advantage of working on canvas board that you know obviously you could do this on paper but um, it's not as stable um, so yeah definitely get the sanding block out if you're working on canvas board right next section you know I'm not going to explain all this because I think it's quite self-explanatory I'm just adding more and more um, uh, shapes this time I'm going for something a bit different I did a, an initial sort of L shape in orange then a pattern that I've put over in red that I was really pleased with thought that looked great have a bit of kind of pattern in there as well um, I'm doing some waxed paper uh, sorry wax crayon rubbing should I say again I'm going to transfer that into another little stenciled shape so I think once you get the hang of these techniques um, you know you, you you kind of imagination starts to wander a bit and you get, just get really lost in the possibilities um, wax crayon if you know I'll, I'll link a video um, above now is a fantastic thing to do rubbings with and get really interesting resists and shapes that you can then transfer in nice sort of faint kind of subtle ways so there's my um, wax crayon rubbing that I've transferred as a resist I've let that dry I'm now uh, going for some more muted kind of ochre colors here so everything's not all kind of bright all the time and transferring that over a little stencil I've cut let that dry again for a good 10 minutes peeling up you can see it looks great now a lovely bit of kind of ripped textural contrast to go against those more graphic edges right so here's the kind of main bit if you like I'm mixing up my color now for the photo transfer so I've swirled this around with a brush first this is some black mixed with some uh, Naples yellow green and a tiny bit of white swirling that round conscious that if I hang around here my photo transfer is not going to be so clear so I'm inking up as fast as I can spreading that paint out nice thin even layer you're just gonna have to get a feel for it yourselves don't give up if it doesn't work first time so transfer goes down very light pressure I left this down for 10 seconds so fingertip pressure and grab a corner and cross your fingers you know I got lucky this time it pulled pretty clean first time I've got some edges to clean up I've got a few kind of unwanted marks very quickly I'm using some off cuts there just in hope of pulling some of that kind of border um, residual paint I don't really want to transfer or be dealing with next stage so let that dry completely then moved on to think about transferring it so obviously I want to keep <laughs> the kind of uh, the white areas of my image if you like transparent so of course I'm using gel medium to transfer here otherwise I'm just going to block out all that lovely hard work I've done on my background so nice even layer of gel medium and flipping it over and this is where that initial or well, that blue shape I've transferred really helped because that I used as a kind of registration guide um, actually a lot easier than it looks just to kind of you know toss around it felt a bit like a pizza chef really just kind of tossing this round, um, big gel plate around left that um, for a good hour or so I think couple of hours even to make sure it had fully dried and yeah dead chuffed with that got a lovely clean transfer but also a bit of that kind of aged look as well a bit antiquey so some lettering um, tracing paper 
just mapping it out and I'm going to do a two stage kind of stencil here first thing I'm going to do is transfer a little uh, background shape for my lettering and then I'm going to use this ballpoint emboss technique as well so in terms of order of printing I'm going to transfer my ballpoint emboss first I'll link a video on this technique above now but um, basically it's the depth of that emboss which then doesn't make contact with the plate so effectively kind of leaves your lettering down or your drawing or whatever and where the paper makes contact um, it obviously lifts the paint so flipping that over light pressure fingertips into the kind of like trickier details the kind of serifs on the letter and, and so forth um, that was down for you know a good 30 seconds maybe even a minute because you want that paint to dry onto the paper and you get this lovely kind of antique kind of fractured lettering right so I've put my little mask down so my theory was pull this with a color then I'm gonna get my lettering but a background color as well again mixing a, my color with a bit of um, gel medium to, to get some transparency so mixing that on a bit of paper separately spreading it out over my lettering which of course is dried completely by the way that's that by you know ballpoint pen emboss the lettering that's dried and inking up flipping over I can just about see through it to line it up and now this transferred fairly well well enough I'd say um, uh, I let it dry for ages um, but when I pulled it you'll see some bits came up with my um, plate it didn't fully transfer and I had to do a, a kind of fair bit of hand colouring just to get a bit of definition back into those areas which is what you see me doing there and that's just some simple uh, brush work okay moving on to the next uh, section of lettering again I stenciled off a little background shape this time it was a kind of very thin rectangle at the base of the image mixed up a little bit of sort of pink and orange um, quite a bright burst of colour for the the base of the image here again a little bit of gel medium as well um, in there okay rolling that out using my small gel plate for this um, you know it's only a tiny little section so you can just sort of patch it in which is what I'm doing there nice you know really good that I've, I've now built up a collection of three different size gel plates and having the three on the go working in tandem does speed process along a little bit um, and it's you know really finding that helps I have to wait for things to dry or kind of wait to do a layer before I can reuse a, a gel plate anyway so uh, next technique you know if you've seen the channel before you will know that I love a bit of oil pastel resist so doing some lettering in oil pastel there this I am going to transfer using so you know deep sort of dark red color nice thin even layer just like with photo transfer or kind of laser copy transfer pop that down you can leave it for a good long time make sure that paint um, is really dry on the paper and you should find your um, lettering or your oil pastel drawing or your mark making is transferred beautifully it's the best kind of material I've come across so far for doing resist work um, using just pure gel medium here transferring that left it for a good 10 20 minutes while that was drying just went back in adding a bit of strength and opacity to some of those kind of background sections in yellow and and kind of really nearly done now you know there's a few other little details um, that I added in like a little green star down at the bottom next to the, the the lettering at the base of the image so I'm just transferring that now and I added a frame to go around the whole thing but look these are oh, what what fun working with this big gel plate and being able to transfer a slightly larger format image you know absolutely fantastic you know I reckon I could actually kind of stitch together or tape together two A3 sheets for photo transfer and do kind of an A2 transfer all in one go because this this large format plate will accommodate that but yeah look I mean I'm fully endorsing I'm in love <laughs> right this is such fun so my judgment well I mean both pieces both this and the more graphic outcome um, that extra space on the gel plate without a doubt 
is giving me loads more options, particularly with the expressive techniques that I, I really love to explore. So without a doubt, for me, it's a fantastic investment and I'm already, only after making two pieces, um, really excited about where I can go with it. All right, so um, there you go. If you enjoyed the video, as ever, subscribe, support the channel, and I will look forward to seeing you soon for another video. Ta-ta.